Hello and welcome to Yurok Farms. In today's video, we're gonna be mounting the corn picker. Starting off, we gotta strip down this tractor, the 686. We gotta take the fenders off, the steps off, that back uh, guard for the PTO. What else do we have? To, we gotta take that toolbox off too. Yeah, that'll come out of there and check our foods. Give it a go around. So yeah, this is the tractor we'll be using and then we're mounting a new idea corn picker. And for those of you that aren't familiar with corn pickers, it's a harvesting unit that gets mounted on a narrow front tractor like this one and it kind of turns your tractor into a self-propelled harvester. 319 with 12 roll husking bed. Yeah and that one can be interchanged where it has a grinding or... A... Yeah they've got a grinder, they've got just a... there's some different attachments, sheller, but we just have the picker. And uh, we did make a video about this a year ago but I figured that this one we'd maybe touch on a few different topics and you guys would get a different perspective and we might be able to answer some of the questions you guys had from that video a year ago. But we're going to bring you guys along with today. First off, we're going to start stripping this tractor down. So one of the questions that people asked were, how much would it cost to buy a corn picker right now? I don't think it'd, it'd be probably a couple hundred bucks, probably under a thousand bucks. Right? To buy a corn picker? Well, the only places I know that use corn pickers anymore are like for the seed corn industry. And even though they're a little different, they leave the husk on. And they got some different deal going here, yeah, because, and I don't know anybody who makes them. They yeah, might be I somewhere think, in the think, world. Yeah, I think the seed corn industry, I think it's like Oxbow that makes their pickers that leave the husk on. It's kind of more, more of a specialty unit. Yeah, not even find that anymore. We want to talk about what our picker's worth. I think it's worth the uh, iron price. Yeah. Because it just, I mean, there's just virtually nobody that does it anymore. You know, there's no demand for that. Even though it's valuable to have it. Cheap storage, cheap harvest. It's just the price of running this tractor, which is mostly just fuel. Not gonna make much difference putting a few hours on this tractor for your corn picker. So that's why we still go with it. Then what do we pick? It's somewhere just under 4,000 bushels we pick. It's not a terrible amount. Usually about three days, maybe four days, if we're not pushing things too hard. And mechanically, everything goes okay. I actually have two of these pickers. Well, isn't it two and a half? Well, then I've got some different ones I bought for parts, which we just took off the parts we want. Kind of scrapped out the rest. And that's just it. So when it comes to parts, you can't get parts like that anymore. So if we had to pick a lot more corn than we're picking, we would have to do something different, combine. We'd have to hire stuff or buy something or change something. I think another thing people ask was the price of cob corn versus shell corn. I know there's equations. Well, what is, uh, cob corn is 72 pounds per, per bushel. Yeah. Because they, they figure the cob in there. But as far as, the, I don't know why the price would be any different. Yeah, I think they, I think they just base it off of the, the dry corn price. Yeah. The, and then. It's going to be, it's going to be similar. But then, but then calculate bushels differently because of the cob. So shelled corn, I think it's 56 pounds bushel? Yeah, that, that sounds about right, yeah. 56 and cob corn is 72. Now I've got some, uh, I made notes, I got a notebook full of all the equations because back in the 90s, I used to buy cob corn from my neighbors. And some of them picked corn yet, and we'd maybe, maybe I would have to pick it, or then we'd have to figure out what it's worth versus shelled corn. And I even knew how much each of my boxes would hold when they were full. I think around 7,000, between seven and 8,000 pounds. Depending on the moisture and some of that, so you have to take that all in consideration because there was no scale. But, and corn was cheap back then. I remember when it was just, it was under $2. It was only like $140, $180, $2, to two bucks. I mean, it wasn't quite so critical to get it exact. We like to harvest a lot more dried grain. We'd probably be 
seriously looking at something a little more modern. For those of you that have harvested dry grain, leave a comment down below what kind of combines you guys like and what you've heard good things about. We'd be interested to hear. As far as the way our wheels are set, the width between right here and right here. When I used to use these tractors for baling and everything else, then we'd always narrow them back up. The mounting picker class. You're never gonna find this just anywhere else. That video you made last year, that was a good one. I would swear that's maybe the only video of mounting a 319 picker there is out there. We're exactly 70 inches from one tire to the next. And you can't really get any narrower with these type of tires on there because they would start rubbing the frame. We never changed these. I used to one. Now, we used to mount this picker on the Oliver, 1650 Oliver. That was before I got this one as a diesel. So the only way we'd ever use that 1650 if something happened to this tractor seriously that we'd have to put it on there. We hope we don't have to go that route anytime soon. This is a better deal. It's more power. And Cooler. Safer, yeah. Less yeah. likely to start a fire with a... A diesel versus a gas. And this, I believe, I could be a little bit wrong on this, but this might be the newest tractor I could get to mount on that picker. Or that, or the biggest you can. Well, they, you know, I've seen 756s put on there. Oh, you're able to see And they get tight, there, yeah. but then your wheels end up being wider and you're, you know, you may be, uh, and then of course we can only do wide row corn, so then there's very little forgiveness in your corn field. So on side hills, if your corn isn't planted just right, so we'd always try to pick from the lower side up, and my pickers even got a side hill hitch where you hook your wagon on so you can scoot your wagon uphill, which works pretty good. But then you get fields where you start off maybe where it's leaning this way. And as you go through the field, you might end up going this way. So you might have to stop part way through and, and readjust your side hill hitch. So there's little tricks to that without driving down those rows. So if you're going to chop your fields, you plant it so the chopper can finagle it without running corn down so much. And if, you, if you're planning on picking it, then you usually what I'll do is is uh, plant from the bottom, bottom up. Or from the top down and then you pick it from the bottom up, whichever way so that you can pick it all the, the, from the same side of the field. So what he's trying to say is he's using top-notch guidance, like RTK or something <laughs> top like that. Top-notch, yeah. it's about somewhere in between here and here. <laughs> <laughs> We know one thing, doing what we're doing right now, you're gonna have to drive a long ways to find somebody that does this. So how much time do you think it takes us to do this? Well, we're gonna find out. I think that was one of the questions too, how much time. Well, the thing out. is, is we are trying to entertain you guys at the same time. So we are stopping now and then to readjust our video stuff here. And we're probably like a 30 minutes in. I mean, if we pretty much start this process after dinner, we got this done well before chore time. So I suppose it'd be fair to say about three hours without, you know, you got a few things you got to do, a little greasing, a little examining the picker before you actually just stick it on. Cleaning the tractor up a little bit. We got to check our air filter. Sometimes I think it takes us longer to prepare the tractor than it actually to mount this thing. And we've done it so many times, you know, just where do you need to go. The bolts all come loose easy because these tractors never sit outside and then the bolts are undone every year. The first time would take you a strong day, even if you knew what to do. Just getting everything adjusted. So I remember when my dad bought his first mounted picker, he had a 656, which had the same frame as this tractor, except it was a gas motor instead of a diesel. And he took it to the implement dealer and they, it was a good used one then. That was in 1980, he had that put on. And we learned really fast how to take them off right. We actually poured a slab of concrete under the double corn crib to, to put it in there. We had to take the cob elevator off to fit under there that time, but. Um, oh yeah, that's pretty common. I think people even do that with their combines where they got a shed just for They their... can fit it in there and, cause it's always in the way the other times of the year. So we're moving the fender. There's just a couple bolts here and then the big U-bolt down there. Up 
blow everything off. I got to check the air filter. I got to add a little bit of oil. I would check our transmission, which I'm assuming is pretty good. So we got everything stripped down. I want to show you guys our, how important organization is to us. We got a nice little pile here so that when we go back to put everything on, it's easy and simple. I don't know if you heard my dad. He said he got these labeled and and uh, everything's laid out real nice. So if you do this long enough, that's you learn to do things that way. Kind of keep the bolts where they belong and stuff. Then you're not relearning every time. Every time feeds everything up, makes everything a lot simpler. could add a gallon just because and then I know the motor was a little low I checked it before we moved it so five four three four we ain't quite a hundred yet are we five four thirty four so it's under a hundred we usually do a hundred maybe 150 I don't know I think we're just gonna leave it be definitely changed out by next summer something for this winter and then the fuel filter, a 3341. I'm betting I got him. I think we should replace him. I remember having trouble with that one time. I mean, picking corn, what do we got? You know, you got less than 20 hours, we'll probably have her. In my opinion, having filters on hand is pretty important, especially something like fuel filters. Sometimes if you have a, a fuel issue, it can be as simple as just changing the filter. Sometimes you get lucky where that's all it is. So it's nice to have them on hand. Yeah, that Bobcat one, I gotta keep fuel filters on hand with that thing. Seems like at least once a year, all of a sudden starts acting up like there's no fuel. And that's a very sensitive filter on that thing, that tier four motor. I think all the newer stuff's getting like that. We're gonna put a gallon in the rear end here. This tractor's got some kind of leak back in the hydraulics there. I never known one that didn't leak. it up into there well, a few years back but I switched them out with the picker on which wasn't very fun but we got her done On this tractor, there's two valves coming out of the fuel tank. There's one to the right and one to the left. The one's a drain and the other one goes to our filters. And then our pump is right here. A little different than those other ones, but all the deals I know got that. There, I can hear air coming out.
Yeah, it's a good idea we got that diesel fuel rinsed off this thing. All the little, like dust likes to stick to that stuff. Okay, so now we gotta put that main bracket on. And that's a crucial piece that allows us to mount the actual corn picker onto the tractor. And so what happens with this thing is this this mount originally was on the international so for instance these parts they go up on top the axle here depending on the brand of tractor if it's an Ellis Chalmers or a John Deere that part would be different it would still match up to here and here and then you got some adjustments in here which goes on top the draw bar you got some adjustments in these shafts which there's a gear that goes on here and then you got the chains that go up to the from each side that's all pre-done so then on the Oliver I have another bracket just like this with those different um, mounts on there to fit the Oliver. So everything is adjusted for the Oliver. And then up in the front here, you got these rods. Now you look at all the holes in here. You know, you got some thread in there. And then these would mount, I believe, to this hole, one of these. On this tractor anyway. Now most tractors got some kind of bolt frame pattern somewhere you can use wherever. And I think even this part in here maybe even flips around if it needs to so it fits all the different brands and once you got that fitted it should work every time the same this is all stuff we learn over time from experience i think back in the day like back in the 70s and 80s there's guys that would mount these and there was always a guy in a shop that would know exactly what to do just anywhere so what I did is this bracket here I had to do some drilling or something on I don't remember exactly there was something I had to change and when you start these kind of things you don't know what you're really getting into until you finally get everything fitted Good. Yeah, I can make fine adjustment with this usually if you got plenty of help around Same thing on the other side. right see now there's two different holes here and I think some tractors somehow probably were different that's just another adjustment for the type of machine we we're gonna put this on. I mean I don't really think it makes much difference what we're using to harvest with there's work there's adjustments there's there's gonna be always some sort of repairs or maintenance to do and if you don't have much of that, usually the machine costs a fortune because it just means it's newer and either way you're going to be working for it. And this one here I had to add on a little bit because apparently this tractor raises it up to slightly higher than the tractor these came from. I think that was what, a 560 I think it was, the diesel? This picker was on. See, and here I had to do a little bit of fabrication because that's the bracket that holds the alternator on. We put these hose on here with some silicone so it doesn't scrape up our paint. Kind of with the other side too. And then we have to be careful here. It actually rubs the oil filter 
want to get too much vibration and messing something up. But then these might have to get readjusted a little bit after the picker's on. Otherwise, yep, we've got his cylinders tied up. So when we get down to the other shed, we can drop those and we're ready to back into it. We're not going to hook up our hydraulic line. We only have single hydraulics because the weight pushes it downward, of course. But, but when I put them on, what happens sometimes, it puts a little pressure on the cylinders. And we're better off to wait until we're ready to hook it up before we hook those in. But I think we got our chains pretty much. They'll probably just need some oil later on. So there you go. That is a tractor ready for a mounted 319 New Idea corn picker. And then what'll happen is it'll lay into these saddles, the front half, and then there's a bracket that flips around here and bolts up tight. So it's basically like in a saddle. The back half will be put on first. It goes into these holes. And then there's a pin that goes through this hole. That holds it. Probably should put a little lubrication on some of this stuff. And then this gear here, that drives our husking bed. And then these guys, there's one on each side, and there's a tube that slides over this and slides onto our little bit of a lineup deal to get that all on. But really, that's mostly what it is. It's not really all that much wrenching down there. It's just getting everything to line up. So if we do it right, right off, without getting it to move off of our blocks that it's already standing on, everything's going to line up real nice. We got to get some tools together here, and I got to think a little bit about what I'm going to need. So it's getting kind of long, so I might split it into two parts. If so, thank you all for watching. Make sure to check out all our other social media pages, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, all that, if you want to see more of us. And then also we have a P.O. box. Anyways, thank you for watching. Keep a lookout for part two.